Hey, is it okay if I film you, Popeye? Well, the camera's gonna make way too much. No, I do oh, they could, now that you're not playing your guitar, it shithead. Won't, it won't. Oh, see, dude, this is a place Anadini has never been here before. Yeah, make sure you stand right in front of Jim so he and I can... That's what I'm saying over here, dick. Look at him, dude. Oh. See, the greatest thing right now, Evan, is that they can hear everything you're saying, and they can talk all the shit about you that they want, but you can't hear them because you don't have headphones on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> 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 uh, should we do? Mm -hmm. There's a million words that I've been saving for a rainy day. All right. <laughs> Yeah. 
Dude, how you feel, dude? How'd it go, dude? First day, brother. It's going alright. It's going as it's going as expected. It's 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 par for far side. It takes us a long time to like do anything. Get into the swing of it. Think this is your last record? I don't know. It, it, it could be. It's. Uh, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be very inconceivable if this were our last record. Just because, you know, we don't really know what what, what the band is is going to be doing in the in the near future. And we're all kind of at the point in our lives where. Um, it, we're kind of the, the band. I, I see the band as being at, at, a, at a at a sort of crossroads, and so and since we haven't been very active in the past few years in in, in terms of uh, uh, touring specifically, that we either we either have to start touring and start touring a lot. Um, very soon, like after this record comes out, or else we'll most likely just probably just disband because no one will want to really do it anymore. And, you know, I mean, three of us are are 26, and so I don't know. And and, uh, and, and so there's other things that we that we want to be doing. We've all finished school, and so this is like the perfect time for us to start. Um, doing the band full time if we're going to because we don't have this you know we're not totally locked down in careers yet or anything like that um, but uh, I mean Kevin's married and him and his wife have plans for, for their future and I know Bob wants to get married soon to his girlfriend and uh, and Chu's got a, you know his teaching credential to get involved in to get something done and, right. what are you doing? doing a little video Yep. Would you guys say? Oh, no. no, come on, dude. Sit back down. Come on, K. Murphy, please. Okay, this has got to feel different recording this record than recording rigged. Is that a question? <laughs> kind of. I don't know. I'm just trying to throw that out there. I just think, no, I just think that it must be, no, because it's an intro. No, it's a different time. I'm saying because when you guys recorded Rig, it was sort of like a naive time. Like not, I'm not saying for you guys, but just. Yeah, well, we were rushed. What for Rig? Yeah. Rushed. We had we had finished the songs like that day. And we didn't practice very well, so we, we kind of felt under the gun to get everything recorded on time. And I, you know, you know, under budget. Mm -hmm. I think the whole record was just rushed. And it ended up being pretty good, but it was rushed. And it sounded like rushed. But I'm talking in terms of like, like how music has changed, like especially how the scene has changed, like how like punk's gotten so much bigger. Because when you guys recorded it, it was, I mean, it was big, but it wasn't like, I mean, this kind of stuff wasn't big at that time, at least in my opinion. No, no. Yeah, I agree. I think. Yeah. I don't know you. Please. Well, I was just saying, I don't understand what you're. 
No, I'm just saying, it's just, it's interesting seeing you guys record this album now, especially like being able to film you guys record this album now. I'd like to have also been able to, to like record Rig, just to sort of see your mindsets, just see you then. It's a lot like filming the Beatles, huh? <laughs> I think that once this, when this record does come out, I think um, we're in a way like a big because punk has become such a big thing. I think a lot more people will, will or, or I should say, I think we'll be a much bigger target to have like stones thrown at us, mm -hmm. basically. How come? Well, because we're not punk, we're rock. Yeah. <coughs> you know. Which is not a bad word. It's not a bad thing. Yo, <coughs> at least we're not we're not punked by what you know the 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 mainstream definition of it is. You know, like the mall chain stores are calling it. Right. You know. I mean, that's I mean that's our roots, just like in punk rock and all that kind of stuff. And you know, and, and for the most part, I think a lot of our, you know a lot of our music you know is is still right up that alley. And every everybody and their brothers in a punk band now. You know, so it's like. You know what's gonna, you know what's gonna make us so special. You know, um, so I don't know. Like it, it's interesting because you guys talk about like like the mall chain stores and stuff like that, but now it's like you know that when you go into those chain stores, this record's gonna definitely be in there. Oh sure. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I I wasn't putting that down at all. I mean, I mean that's the point of making a record. I mean, if you're if you're injured bad enough to where you want to record it, you're obviously gonna want to sell it. So. To pretend like you want to pick and choose your audience is, is uh, it's just silly. So I wasn't putting that down. I was just saying I think it's funny that punk rock is defined by like mainstream society now. Mm -hmm. You know, where it used to be sort of like uh, it was its own thing that like defined itself um, in the sense that it created itself and and, s and separated from everything else. Now it's like now it's a part of what it was trying yeah. to separate it from. Yeah. Yeah, it's just also interesting also because when you guys recorded like Rig, let's say like Rochambeau, it was kind of more or less just sort of, I mean, you, you guys were going in to record it and it was a big deal, but it was a big deal, in my opinion, at least at that time, more for like, like the friends and whatnot and yeah, the people. It's a big deal that like, oh wow, we're making a record. Mm -hmm. cool. This is more of a big deal for me at least because I think these songs are, are at the point we're recording them now, are fully realized. We know exactly what we want them to sound like and we know what it's going to sound like. <coughs> And so it's real uh, nice to be able to get it out. You know, it's not just like we're recording for fun now. It's 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 like we have a purpose. We're cathartic in that sense. Whether or not anyone will care is. No, see, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Whether or not we care if anybody cares. It's another thing altogether. <laughs> is there enough light in here? I mean, oh yeah, this looks like when we were kings. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie was poorly recorded, Jason. No, no. <laughs> Brazier. Hello? 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 <coughs> you should hear what he said in the comments. I love this. I love, I love, I love movies. <laughs> I love doing this. I love movies. Are you, you want to sleep? Yeah. Are you going to record anymore? Thanks. Thank you, yeah? <coughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll beat you up if you don't. When, how soon do you think you might want to give it a try, just out of curiosity? I don't know. I'll, I'm, I'm leaving in an hour and a half. Yeah. What time is right now? It's like uh, 10 to 9. You have to, you have to, what time do you have to work at 6? Wow. Yeah. How, long is the, how long is the drive to Orange? Like, is it any shorter? Like, to here than anyplace else? Would you still buy an hour and a half? No, it's not saying. It's farther here than it is to practice. Oh, really? Yeah. From San Diego? I have to get, I have to work tomorrow at actually I don't have to get up until six thirty. But then Monday morning I have to get up at five thirty. So oh, I work all day tomorrow, then come here and do the studio and then go back home, get a couple hours of sleep and go back to work. Oh wow. Yeah. Not too anyway. Great. Are you still filming? Yeah. Let's talk about my job. Yeah, let's talk about it, dude. Tell me. No, seriously, dude. You work with your audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, I work with who might have been my audience like five years ago.
<laughs> so now that they're so young and, and the band has become so old and hasn't done anything for so long that nobody knows who we are. Are they into like ska at your work and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, they're into like bands like uh, Propagandi and just anything that's on fat records, they're into it. No, I just find this really, really interesting. I really do, just like like recording this. And like the more I think about it, I wish I would have been here like from the beginning and would have brought tapes to record every hour of this. Well, whose fault was that? No, I didn't think about it until I was in there filming, filming you guys. I just, it's just really I I interesting. I mean, I'm saying just because it's changed so much, like recording and stuff like that. Like now when this record goes out, there's going to, like Revelation, there's going to be like a thing like selling tips and whatnot and who's in the band and what they've done previously and how many Very units, good what? Very good, man. Yeah, I know, exactly. That's you go to Tower Records, they have this little computer <laughs> thing. You punch in Far Side, and let's say you punch in, uh, I think it's Rochambeau, and it says Far Side features Popeye on vocals. <laughs> so then you punch in Rig, and it says Far Side features K yeah. Murphy on guitar. Oh, exactly. It's got like a little picture. That'll come and that's it. That's all it says. Yeah, that's like, oh, you just found signs. Like, I've, like, I've, like I've done a lot before this band or anything like that. Right, like Popeye. So they're talking about Borderline, is what they're thinking of. <laughs> Yeah, but somebody's gonna see that and they're gonna go, wow, which, which, Popeye's which, in that band. <laughs> which, some, which some people may care about, but at a place like Tower Records, uh, it's pretty silly. Yeah, yeah you never know these days. That's true. I was in, when I was in Tower the other day, I bought uh, the new Shove to Think, and I swear to God, I'm not making this up. The kid in front of me was buying the No Fun Answer CD. <laughs> major one with the everything's open that you guys lifted from REM. <laughs> <laughs> that one? No, the, the full bar chord with all the open stuff. 
the full bar chord with all the open stuff. On the A. Yeah, at the A. Oh. And then you just do the big REM chord. That? No, put, no, put the major third in there. <laughs> You're talking Greek to me right now. Yeah. No, put the, the major third. What's major. a major third? Yeah, you make it major. Like that? That's it. That? I've never used that chord in my life. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's the opening chord of Rochambeau. What are you talking about? What's the, the big chord in the statue? The first chord you hit in the statue. Oh. Oh, big difference. <laughs> big difference. There's a lot of difference between the two. Okay, that's. That would be minor as opposed to. Because this is like. This is C sharp. This is more. This is, this is much more bittersweet sounding. Am I happy? Am I sad? Yeah, no. It's a regular. Could go either way at this Yes, sir. Okay, the whole story.
just thinking of something else. <laughs> just, do I like chocolate? Do this for the rest of your life? Record? No. Well, recording's I mean, one thing. I mean, that's not to say this, but let's just say do music. Not as a, not as a job, no. No. I mean, I, I mean, I like doing it the way I do it. And, and, and I've been doing it for the last, like, I don't know, like 11 or 12 years since I started, like, being in bands with people, like, you know, you just get, you just do it when you get the free time, and you, and you just do it for the fun of it, and because you like music, and that's it. You take care of what else you you gotta do, and then and then this is just like, you know, what you do when you're not at, at work or when you're not at school or when you're not doing something else. I got like a, my life has never revolved around like any band that I've ever been in, and uh, I've I've never gotten that uh, that absorbed with. Uh, how, how'd it go? What are we talking about here, man? I'm all done. We're talking about music. Dude, Liz Hurley, dude. Liz Hurley? <laughs> Fucking funny song, dude. I like it. Liz Hurley. That's the name of the song? Yeah. Liz Hurley? Why would it call that? Watch this shit, Mush. Oh, shit, wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, that looked great. You You're gonna shit. need a lot of tape, because it's gonna take about no, a no, half no, an hour no. for him to Mush, play. watch this shit. Wait, why is it called Liz Hurley? That's fucking Kevin Warren called that. Let's Who's Liz Hurley? I don't know that girl. Hugh Grant's wife. Hmm? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, Mush, hold on. Let me fucking get this within three tries. <laughs> Here we go, watch this. Huh? Fucking A. Are we gonna edit this, right? Oh yeah, it'll be edited, dude. <laughs> wow, that's great. <laughs> Fuck off, dude. What a laugh the day that you, uh... The day it goes right down your throat and you gag. I'm like this. You need some light for this one. And you cough. You, is, is this light enough for you? It's light enough, I People mean. I've been raising that question all night. Okay. And what is and what is fine tune Jacobs always tell them? Mm. Uh, mm. Are you see that? Here, I'll do it again for you. Oh. Yeah, baby, here, one more time. Oh, uh, hold on. Okay, this is gonna be a perfect one. This is for Papa what? and you. Because you guys are such good friends. If I don't make this dude our friendship, I'll never be your friend again. Thank God. Miss it. Wait, wait, what? Uh, wait, 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 wait
I wouldn't want to have to. I, th I think when this would become my job and or my career. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to this. For you know, for the for the rest of my life, then I it, I don't think it would be as fun. I mean, having it as your occupation for or having it as my occupation for a while, you know, maybe like if we decided to to go tour full time for like a year or something, then you know. You know, as long as it was going to be over, like, eventually, then I'd be like, okay, you know, and... Everything ends eventually. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm talking, like, the difference between a year or two and then, you know, hitting, like, you know, hitting, you know, pushing 40 and still doing this. Uh, Dude, when know. 40, we're going to be doing this shit, dude. I'll be home showing barbecues. We're not even doing... Well, I'm not talking about this band. I mean, I'm just, like, talking about, like, being a musician in general, like, a career musician. Just, I don't know. I mean, it's just not a... <coughs> I, I mean... I think if it be, I think if it became my job and I had to take it that seriously and that was my work, then I don't think it would. I, I don't think I would enjoy it as much. Because um, part of the, part of the thing that I love about it is it's like my escape from everything else. And I think once my escape would become what I eat and sleep and and live every day indefinitely, um, then like I'd need an escape from that. You know, I'd probably start. I'd probably get a you know, a part-time job on the side, you know, even if I didn't need it, it'd probably be something like that, just, you know, to have something else to do, you know. I, I, I don't know, I just wouldn't want to get too, uh, too absorbed in, in one thing like that to where, I, uh, you know, I, I want it out. And uh, an another thing is, is that it's, it's not a real easy life to live, you know, because, you know, when you, it's, it's really hard, I think, to, to put roots down anywhere because you're traveling all the time. Um, I mean, this is just this is just for me. A lot of people. <coughs> See, he's not, he's, I know. He's saying this because I'm in the room now. See, he has to say, "Oh, okay. exactly," because I don't want you to fucking jump <laughs> no, in. No, no, like, no, oh. dude, you can do this. I'm not saying shit, dude. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta say shit, dude. But, uh, I know what happens when you wear black. Why don't you select the power? Oh. That's a really good idea. I, I dumped this out 15 minutes ago. business being in the studio. Being in the studio can be a lonely business. business. Uh, you, you do a lot of standing around. Can I call you Bach? Arthur Bach? What kind of fucking movie are you making anyway? Dude, you look like Dudley Moore. Yeah, I look ex You know, a lot of people <laughs> tell me that. No, when I was working at Neiman Marcus, he came in one day and we were watching him on the camera. Oh, did you arrest him? I wanted to. <laughs> he was being a jerk. You did sit down, next Popeye. Oh, yes, sir. Stephen Popeye. Sure, bro. Um <laughs> and uh <laughs> and it's just not it's just not a real it's just not a real healthy life, I don't think, you know, because uh you know, 'cause I am not a, I mean I'm not a stranger to touring and you don't eat well and you don't sleep well and uh And like I said, you know, you, you don't you don't have a you don't have a home. You don't. After a while, you want to be able to 
sleep in your own bed and, and take shit in your own toilet, you know, and you get and you get sick of it. And, and I, I don't know. I just don't want to live that way. And, I, and and part of that is because what I want out of life eventually is to is to have a have my own family. And I and I wouldn't want to do it if I was gone most of the time, you know, because I because I I mean if I was gonna if I'm gonna be a husband and or a father, I'd want to be the absolute best at it that I can be, and I don't think that I could if I if my job was to be on the road all the time, you know, or be gone for huge long periods of time, you know, I think that's a really important thing about, you know, uh, uh, particularly with raising children, you know, I wouldn't want to be gone while they're while they're growing up and when they need like you know, their parents around and stuff like that, and, you know, so I wouldn't, you know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing it for a short while, but, but only for a short while, and then I just want to have, like, you know, just a, a day job where I can, you know, come home from work every day and, and be home on the weekends and, and try to just enjoy, like, having a life and kind of carving out a niche for myself, like, at home, having, having a home, you know, a foundation to, to build, you know, the rest of my life on. Man, a Whopper looks good right now. There's always time for that. <coughs> yeah, exactly. There's always time for that. But I just, and, and that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't want to be doing this forever. For sh for a short while, it's fine. But you know, I mean, t <laughs> you know, but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to like get like to middle age and then say, okay, now I'm gonna do this, and you know, and and you know, not get married until I'm fucking forty and start having children like <laughs> when I'm around that age or something like that. I mean, and plenty of people do that, but I, I don't want to do it that way. You know, I wouldn't want to be, uh, I wouldn't want to be in my 60s when, you know, when my, when my kids are like graduating high school, you know, I want to be able to be young enough to, to where I could, uh, um, enjoy their, their childhood without me having to worry about like, you know, back pains and retirement money and like, you know, what the hell am I going to do with, the, you know, after when I can't work any longer and stuff like that. I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of neurotic in a way, but that's just how I see it, you know. And, uh, so that's how I, so, so I know how I want to do it. Some of us are very free spirited and no, but I didn't say anything. See, he's fucking. He's no, like, I'm not. I'm not fucking. <laughs> no. See, when no. we, we how I talk, dude. That's that's how I, I know he's talking about because well, um, some of us are free spirited. Well, yeah, because 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 see, Brian and I are, are see, Brian and I are good examples of the of the the opposite sides of the fence. And Brian and I have been friends for so long. Like we were we were really really good friends for years before um, we were in a band together. And we still remain really close friends, and and uh, <laughs> just from just from just from growing up, we you know you, you, you know you develop a certain personality, and we're just way different. And Brian's always been the kind of guy that could just kind of pick up and leave. I, and I love hearing people talk about me. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> no, I mean, I mean, not like in a, a vain way, but just like with you know, because you you think certain things about yourself, and then to hear someone else talk. How did you two meet? High school. Yep. Out in front of the gym. My first encounter with, with Popeye, I was walking home from school, and he was skating towards school. And um, I was saw him before. Like, I mean, I've seen him around school and stuff. But uh, he stopped me, and he's like, oh, hey. And this is like fucking like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And um, he sk <laughs> comes to skate by, and he just stops really abruptly and goes, oh, dude, so what time is it? Is our school over? I'm like, yeah. He just goes, okay. He's like, jumped out of skateboard. He's like, oh. I always slept that day. Wait, what did you say to me? I don't know. Oh, I, you, know, you know what I said? I, I said that I did. Something really, it was something really clever. I like, said that I missed first period. Yeah, and I was like, I chuckled. And then the first time we really hung out was like, uh, Papa and Paul Simon had like an English class or something together. And um, I just hung out with Paul Simon a lot. And um, not, not the. Not, not the freaking Garfunkel dick. Yeah. But uh, Paul Simon, the guy from HP. And um, one day, God, Papa, I mean, we, just, we just went and hung out, and we were eating for lunch. We were just, like, chilling. It was, like, Papa and Mark Lee, me and Paul Simon. And that's when the crew started. And the first time we all went out and did something, we went to the SWAT meet. Went and got a hard stance hat, embroidered. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was funny. They were showing us at the SWAT meet? 
No. Well, you know, they have the little hat. You guy. buy a blank hat and you can get whatever you want to put around it. And like, uh, I told you and they, that. And they, they misspelled one of them for a friend of ours. And, but he didn't notice it until after he'd already got home. What, what did it say on it? It just it just said hard stance is one word, so it was just hard stance. Oh, yeah, it's hard stance. But uh, then ever since then, we just, we've always hung out. I like to have all my possessions in, in a little bag and be able to fucking move anytime, you know? And he does. But I mean, I don't know, maybe when I'm older, it'll change, but for right now, live life, you love. And love life, you live. Right, much, Nick? And some of us just get tired. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. What? And some of us just get tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me, it's I'm, I'm, I will fully admit that I'm, I'm the reason why Farsight hasn't done any major touring in the last few years is because I just, there were other things I wanted to take care of and I knew that if I went on tour, that it would just, it would, uh, screw up a lot of other things in my life and, uh, we had already done, like, a few tours before that and I, I don't dislike touring but I didn't see myself like really getting anything out of going on tour. It was, I don't know, it was kind of like a, I was kind of at a point in my life where I, where I just really felt like I needed to get, take care of some stuff at home, basically. Did, did you? Yeah. So you don't regret not touring? No, I don't, re I don't regret it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I uh, you know, I, I, I feel sorry for, you know, for everybody else, the band, because, <laughs> they, because they really, because they really wanted yeah, to. Yeah, but I don't know, at the same time, it's kind of like, I mean. You were going on tour with Rage, you didn't no, care. No, no, not even before that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's I think it's better that we didn't tour, because like, we probably would have either broken up or just got burnt out or something like that. But I mean, you really think now, so? Well, I mean, I, for me, no, but like, you know, other people. But I think it's good that like, we all got our shit straight, you know, like school and all the other good stuff, but um. I mean, it's fine. Like, yeah, Papa needs some time off, and that was his decision. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's not like we're gonna go like get, get someone else to sing for us like that. It's bullshit. Yeah, it wasn't like time off for the <coughs> band. Like, you know, we still practice and we still played shows and and uh, and stuff. But it kind of like, but just touring. Just at the time, like I just it was just out of the question. Just being gone for that long, and we'd gone. I mean, and so all we've done is just done little like jaunts, like a couple jaunts to the East Coast. You know, play, um, you know, like between like five and ten shows or something like that, and then come home, like, like you know, whatever, like our vacation time from work could afford. But uh, you know, but you know, you know. You had some help on one tour with a really, really proficient roadie. Yeah. When's this record gonna come out? I don't know. I'm imagining this summer sometime. Probably like middle end summer. That's if. That's if we finish recording, I mean, like, and mix it by, like, the end of April and have the layout done by that time. Which we want, so it'll probably come out. Yeah. We'll probably have it turn in the drone by, like, late May. Yeah, so we still have it, we still have it, see, July, it's still, August. like, it's only the third week of March, so we've still got plenty of time to, like, figure out what we're going to do for the, for the layout and actually get everything together and do it, but... We never do like we always say, you know. Every time we do a record, yeah, we're, we're gonna have the, you know, this time we'll have the layout done before we finish recording. Blah 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 blah. But then we never do. Yeah, this is what it's all about, right here, partner. So you bring in, you really want a good cup of coffee, you bring in your own shit. See what I like about this video that I'm making about you guys? I have absolutely no idea where it's going. It's kind of good. I'm gonna figure out I'm just gonna film. See so, you now, I'm now I've brought in my own beans, my own grinder. Hold on a second, I don't want to lose count here. What are you guys playing again? I don't know, we don't have anything booked right now. We're... We're probably... Probably won't play any shows... For a while. Um, I mean, we had, I mean, we had decided that, we, you know... <coughs> God... What the heck was that? September... Um, that, w that w we weren't going to play any shows until <coughs> we were finished completely recording with this record. We played a show a few weeks ago at the Roxy with uh, 
with Seth's building game face just because, you know, we would have been suckers to pass that up because that's just a really good show. But um, we were going to play some other shows, but we had to, they either, either the show got canceled or we had to cancel for, for some reason. Brian just left the other day to go on tour. Um, so he's going to be in and out until this coming September. There's an SCTV TV skit. <laughs> it was Michael McDonald going going to studio to get the gig, and he's running late. And he goes, "Such a long way to go." And then afterwards, you're like, "Okay, hey, thanks a lot, Michael. Um, I don't have anything uh, for you today, but you know, maybe tomorrow, I'll, or maybe next week, I'll give you a call." Okay. Such a long way to go. You're gonna have to bring me up way in the earphones too for this part. No, it's the next one. What are you getting there? And I'll use them all at once if that's what I have to do. It wasn't exactly breathtaking, but... Yeah, the next, the next chorus. Yeah. And I use them all at once if that's what I have to do. Uh, what, what would you recommend, if anything? And I'll use them all at once if that's what I have to do. Yeah. Sure. I think I'm dragging it on too long. And I'd use them all at once if that's what I have to do. Yeah. Yeah! And I'd use them all at once if that's what I have to do. No, oh, no, no, no. I didn't, I wasn't smelling a Grammy all over that one either. <laughs> Dude, why isn't the band going on tour? Just, just let's cut to the camera. Uh, Kevin doesn't want to. So, that's that. He's got 
uh, he's got too much stuff going on at home, uh, and, and he, he, he just uh, he feels that if he that if he were to go away um, and do a lot of touring, because 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 we kind of have the understanding that if we were gonna if we are gonna go on tour, then we're gonna go on tour constantly, like kind of as a full time job, so to speak, and. Um, it would for him. It would just screw up too many things in his, with his marriage and with uh, um, his life revolving around the marriage, but not necessarily revolve around the marriage, but connected to the marriage and stuff. So, um, which is totally understandable, and we're not, you know, we wouldn't give him a hard time about that. And we totally respect his decision. So that's that. So what's gonna happen now? I don't know. Um, I just. I kind of wanted to break up the monotony a little bit. You think it's not working very well? Yeah. And I'd use them all at once if that's what I have to do. Yeah! Yes, yeah, I'm there. Good news, and I'd use them all at once if that's what I have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's why we pay you for your honesty. Um, yeah, I, I, I sang the last part of the line before, so just keep that in mind. Just to get in the, you know, whatever. All right, let's see the next one. Citizen Kane and I, and the shot that I'm getting is very reminiscent of one of the shots in Citizen Kane. Rosebud. <laughs> Rosebud. Would you prefer to Popeye's Rosebud? What? What are you fucking saying about me? Nothing. <laughs> huh? Nothing, Rosebud. Speak up, boy! Rosebud. Dude, this shot is like, there's like a deep focus feel to it. We got you, Jim. We got the studio console. We got Popeye. Granted, I was filming a big box in front of Popeye, but still. <laughs> Go ahead, just in case I feel like doing some chin ups. Tricks that I 